Hey guys, and welcome to this side dish from amadeocompositions.com. Now, this is a very short side dish. It's, I'm making this side dish because I got a request on YouTube, um, and it's basically a very simple thing. It's actually a question that was asked. A very simple thing that is pretty hard to explain in words. So I thought, let me just show you. And it's actually something that a lot of uh, new users of Blender might encounter because it's not something that you encounter in a lot of other um, software packages. It's quite unique to Blender. So let's just open Blender and let's see what we are talking about. So this is the default um, user interface layout. Okay, If you open Blender, um, it usually looks like this. Now this is fine for most things and you can actually browse through, through different um, layout presets by hitting Control left and right click. Okay, So this is the default layout. If you hit Control left click, you can see compositing, animation, video editing, UV editing, scripting, motion tracking, game logic, and default again. Now, especially if you're a beginner, you don't really want to bother with the U user interface, okay? You're kind of okay with the default one because you don't need very specific things, at least not at first, and you don't really want to bother with things that disappear or with how to rearrange it, okay? But it can also happen that you accidentally delete something or make something disappear, and it's quite annoying if you don't know how to undo that change, okay? And the good thing about Blender is that this user interface is very modular, so you can actually create it in any way you want. You can really go haywire with it, do whatever you want. On the other hand, of course, it's a bit difficult to um, uh, to keep the overview uh, if you're still a beginner, okay? So let me just try to explain to you how this user interface works. You can see we have different sections, okay? So this section here is called the 3D viewport. This is the outliner. This is the properties panel or just the properties or whatever you want to call that. This is the timeline. And up here is the um, the header, so to say, the info bar or yeah, just with the standard things like file and render window and help. Okay. And you can see in each upper right corner of those sections, you can see a triangle. And then each lower left corner, you can see a triangle. Okay. And they enable you to do quite a few things. If you click on them with left click, you can drag them around. If you now drag your mouse to the left, then you actually create a new window, a new section within that section. Now you can see we have two 3D viewports um, right next to each other. Now, of course, you could click on this icon here and you could change that to something else, to the text editor or to the movie sequence editor or to the UV image editor, whatever you want. Likewise, you can also delete windows, grab that triangle, move it to the right, and you can see you have this arrow in this right section. If you now let go, it disappears. Let's recreate that once again. And if we now grab that triangle again, if you go to the right, you can see you could now delete or remove this right section, but you could also go to the left and remove the left section. Okay. But what's important is that if you move it to the left, then you create a new section. If you want to delete the left section, then just clicking and moving to the left doesn't work. You have to move to the right first and then to the left, and then you can actually delete the left section. So far, so good. Now, important to know is that this info bar is not an exception. It works exactly like all the other windows, all the other sections. Okay, You can drag that down, you can see it becomes bigger. You can also change that to the 3D viewport if you want. Then you can see we have the 3D view. It doesn't make a lot of sense, granted, but it's possible. And that is just supposed to emphasize how equal all those different section types are. Okay, That's also why you can very easily get rid of the wrong ones. For example, if you happen to do that, you can see the timeline is gone. Now, as a beginner, you might not know how to get that back. And that can be very frustrating. All you have to do, click that left, uh, that lower left corner uh, triangle, move it upwards like this, and go to timeline. And you have your timeline back. Now, the specific request from YouTube said that he or she is missing the header, this info bar, okay? So let's say that would happen to us. Let's just make all those things disappear and like this. And then you can see we all only have this header. 
Now let's say we have the 3D viewport here. We have our properties over here, like this. We have the outliner over here, like this. And we have our timeline over here, like this. Okay, now everything is as it is in default except for this header, okay? If that happens to be your layout, then it's actually quite a bother to get the header back because you actually, you have to, first of all, remove that. Then you have to remove that. Then you have to remove that. Then you can add this extra bar for the header. Then you can add back in the properties, the outliner, and finally the timeline. Then you just have to set them to the specific section. Let's get properties, outliner, Okay, now you can see this can at times be a bit bothersome, but it's got the big advantage that you can really create whatever UV, uh, UV user interface layout that you want. You are not limited by anything. There are a few things to consider though. First of all, let's say you have this kind of setup. You can see you can go crazy here. You can just add windows within windows, within sections as often as you want, like this. It's important to know in what order you can actually remove them, okay? For example, we learned if you drag to the right, you can remove the section right to it. If you drag to the left, you can create a new one. And if you drag right left, then you can actually remove the, uh, the section that belongs to this, to this triangle, okay? You cannot, however, for example, do this. You can see you cannot delete this lower section if you have two sections above it, okay? You have to first remove this section, then this section, and then add the other section back in. That works, okay? So you can never manipulate two sections at a time. Same goes for here. You cannot, for example, remove all those three sections at once. It doesn't work. You have to, first of all, remove this section, then this section, then this section, and then they are all removed. You cannot do it at once in one step. That's not possible. And I think in a lot of cases that is actually good because this way you can only accidentally remove one at a time and not like, I don't know, a whole block of sections at once. And that's really, really helpful. Now, that is more or less it already. You can see um, all the sections, no matter what type, by the way, um, this um, header here is called info, okay? In info, you have file, add, render, window, and help, and those are quite important. And yeah, that's essentially how you can create your very custom UI layouts or how you can um, restore a layout that you accidentally um, destroyed or uh, removed a part of it or something like that. One other important thing is that um, you might know the user preferences, okay? The user preferences um, let you make uh, adjustments, then you can save them. But if you click on save as default, then everything gets saved as default, including your properties, including your outline, including all your objects. For example, if I duplicate this one and if I scale it up or something like that, and now if I go to file, user preferences, save as default, now, if I close that, and if I reopen Blender, you can see everything got saved. Everything, okay? And especially as a beginner, you might make that mistake that you think like, oh, okay, let me make an adjustment here. For example, let's go to Smooth Stroke for whatever reason. And then you think if I go to Save as Default, only the things within the user preferences are being saved. Wrong. You save everything, okay? And that also, no big deal. All you have to do is go to File, Use, uh, load factory settings, and then you just loaded all the factory settings. Now, for some weird reason, you have this gap up here, okay? So I recommend you just close that, and then you go to File, um, User Preferences, User Preferences, Save as Default, and then you once again have your default layout, okay? But this technique only works if you want the standard layout of Blender to be default, okay? If you already have a file with, for example, some models in it or, 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 or some kind of uh, whatever, some kind of data in it, then if you go to File, Load Factory Settings, all of those things will be deleted, okay? So for example, you have this, let's say you have this scene, and now you accidentally deleted the timeline, and you don't know how to get that back. If you now go to File, Load Factory Settings, it will delete your cubes and everything, so this is not an option. Okay, if, and you can also, 
also you cannot go to control set so your previous scene unless saved in some way um, disappears that's not a good thing okay so if you have something like that and you want to and you accidentally removed your timeline then you have to get it back by creating a new section and changing that to timeline okay so as I showed you if you lost your header for example you now know how to retrieve it and um, yeah, there's one other thing I wanted to tell you, which is unrelated to this uh, side dish, basically. Some of you might have noticed that I didn't post any bigger tutorials within the last two weeks, actually. That's because I've been really busy with exams and moving. I actually moved within the same city, but it's still quite a lot to do. And it's just, a, I'm just very, very busy at the moment. So don't worry, um, new tutorials will be up soon. Um... Also, I will redesign my homepage to make it more user-friendly and to make it more cross-platform compatible so you can um, view, view it better on iPhones and tablets and stuff like that. It will stay free, of course. Nothing, uh, Everything's free of charge. And yeah, also, it will the navigation will become more intuitive and a bit more exciting, I think, with a bit of JavaScript involved and stuff like that. So um, stay tuned for that. I hope you like this tutorial. Um, if, uh, if you have any kind of comments or questions, um, post them in the sections below the videos. Thank you for watching. I hope this solved the question from YouTube. Uh, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.